Right, so today's job, we're going to be power flushing this system. So we've got Pot and Suprema, open vent system, uh, 10 radiators here. So just letting the heating run at the moment whilst I set up the power flush machine. Um, plan is to take the pump out and connect straight onto the pump valves there. Um, so that we can literally just go straight into the primaries. Now, I need to obviously cap the vent and the feed. Um, just try and trace this pipe work back. So obviously we've got flow going into the pump, which is going up there and then this goes straight up there now there's only one 15 mil feed here which is our cold main going up i can't see another 15 mil feed to the boiler so i'm assuming that it's probably going to be a combined feed and vent so i'm going to just go in upstairs into the loft and double check that if that is the case then i'll just um cap it up in the loft somewhere um or probably maybe put lever valve here um, so that we can isolate anything going straight back up so lever valve up here because we've got the flow teeing it here so we need obviously that to flow around so I might put a lever valve there just temporarily or maybe just put a, a compression cap and then just put a compression coupling back on again um, to fill the system I might tee into the cold main here um, I don't want to touch any of these if I can help it because yeah you know what happens when you start touching old valves so might just cut a, a T into here to use to fill the power flush machine um, yeah make sure we leave that three port in heating position so that we get flow around the heating system okay so up in the loft there's the feed and vent so if I zoom in don't know if you can see just yet but see where that get my finger in there see where that t is there so you've got the feed teeing into there and that's going to the vent so yeah it's a combined feed and vent so if i cap that uh, or put a lever valve down in the air and covered um, and then obviously remove the handle afterwards um, that will allow me to just cap that whole section off so when i'm flushing i haven't got to worry about um, it sort of backflowing up into there for new tanks so I'll get my bungs out, bung the tank there, cut an isolation valve below, and then yeah, crack on from there. Right, so I'm just cutting in the valve here, but before I cut it in, just wanted to show you guys what the inside of the pipe's like there. You see, there's a lot of crap inside that pipe. Going up to the vent, it's not so bad. But yeah, that's coming from the system. See, so yeah, all that, imagine, it's all going to be clogged up in there. Okay, so the machine's running, got the magnets in, got a bit of X800 in there. The water quality at the moment isn't looking too bad, but it's only just started circulating, so we're going to let it circulate for an hour. Um, and then start isolating the rads. So I get asked quite a lot about how I set up my power flush machine. So whilst this is circulating, I'm gonna do a little video of it. Um, right, let me just start this again. I'm just gonna pop the flash on uh, so I don't have to use the uni light. Right, hopefully that's a bit better. So from the power flush machine, one side goes to the flow, one side's the return. So from the flow, that hose, if you follow it around, that's going to the flow to the three port. So that's the direction that the pump would have been going. So obviously you can change that because you've got a little toggle there so you can flip that back and forth. But because I'm flushing through the boiler, I'm not gonna be reversing the flow. I'm gonna keep it one direction because we don't want the main heat exchange to get clogged up. And I don't know if you can see, well you can't because the flash is on, but the boiler's actually lit up as well. So I'm using the combined heat of the machine and the boiler which should activate the chemical a little bit better and give us a better flush um, so anyway back to the setup so we've got one side is the flow it can be either way but this is how I'm doing it today and this is how I normally do it one side is the flow so that will connect to the flow side on the heating system if it was a combi or a system boiler I'd probably cut in two T's underneath the flying returns and that side would go onto the flow then from this side which is my return that actually goes to the magnet lens 
So that's going to the top connection of the magnet lens because the bottom connection of the magnet lens goes to the return on the heating system. So if it was a combi or a system, again, cutting two T's on the primary flying returns, that connection would go onto the return side. So the concept is, as it circulates, imagine the boiler circulating as it would do. So it would go from the flow, around the heating circuit, come back, returning through there. So the first pathway when it returns is gonna be through that magnet. So that's where it's gonna collect all the dirt. Go through there, second canister, and then come back into the machine. So the idea is the magnets would intercept most of the dirt. So you may not see a lot of dirty water in there, but that will obviously be clogged up and that will pick up the majority of it. So then it comes back in here. So water shouldn't be as bad in there. And then it circulates back around again. So flow, return. So flow going there to the system, blah, 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 blah. Coming back around through the return back through there, through there, through there, and into there. So that's my little circuit that I've created. If it was, if I wasn't flushing through the boiler, I would also then look at reversing the direction as well. So then you can flick it back and forth, agitate the rads and stuff, but the radiators here, I mean, they are really old. So I'm not gonna be agitating them just in case. Obviously it's an open vent system as well. Uh, and I'm not going to be reversing direc the direction of the flow because I don't want the main heat exchanger in here to get blocked up either. Um, so yeah, we're going to let this circulate for about an hour. Um, and then I'm start isolating the radiators and flushing them one by one. Also, I forgot to mention, uh, yeah, I've got the power on just to make sure that the three port sits in heating mode. Because when I've, well, the first time that I flushed on a Y-Plan system, um, Obviously, I wedged that open, but that puts it in mid position when you wedge it open manually. So the water is going to take the easiest pathway. So it just kept circulating through the cylinder coil. And then I had to take the head off and move the spindle manually to make sure they went around to the heating side. Um, however, what I do now, I take the pump out, taking out the, oh, the pump cable, so the pump's completely disconnected. Um, so we don't want the pump to run dry, but that three port will now sit in heating position because I've got the programmer on just for heating and the room stat turned up. So that will force it down the heating side. And that is, I can't put my hand on that. 60 degrees. Oh, nice and warm. So yeah, that's good. And then what I'll do at the end is obviously I'll turn the heating off turn the hot water on and let it just circulate through the coil to clean that up as well um, and then yeah we should be good to go okay so we're coming up to the hour so I just what I'd show you guys so oil is still running I've actually turned the element off on here because that's actually running about just under 80 degrees um, I just thought I'd go around with the thermal imaging camera at the moment to show you what we've got so currently all the radiators are getting heat to all of them so at least it proves that we've got our connections right. Flow and returns are all working fine. Oh, that one's hot as well. We've got that one in the back there. We've got that one there. It's nice and hot. This one here. So we've got good heat going towards them. It's the same downstairs. Um, I'll take you guys around anyways. Just so that you get the complete picture. So we've got that one there. Got nice heat going to it. Yeah, that one's hot. There's a hidden one sort of back there. That's getting nice and hot as well. And so is that one. So, yeah, I'm gonna start isolating the radiators now. Because it's been an hour circulating the whole system. Everything's, everything's getting nice and hot. 
um, and then start flushing the rads individually now. Right, so the five minutes is, I mean, not five minutes, um, the hour's up, we've finished circulating all the rads, I've finished isolating all the radiators as well. Uh, and that's an update the colour of the water. So now I'm going to flick that off. Uh, I'm going to isolate that. I've turned the heating demand off so the boilers shouldn't fire anymore. Turn that off. Turn that off. Turn that off. And we'll get these open and see what they're like inside. Let's have a look. Oh, that's hot as well. Whoa. It's a lot of sludge. bad for 10 radiators and that is steaming hot right so that's filling we've actually got really good cold main so i've had to put the pump on there just to weigh it down otherwise that kept flying out so filling it shouldn't be a problem i've got this trailing out and dumping out here see the color of that so we're going to let that run until it runs clear um, and then move on to the next radiator when I first started dumping it the dump rate was like literally a trickle I realized after that one side of the lock shield wasn't fully open so I've opened both sides and now we've got slightly better flow rate I'm just going to go and keep an eye on the machine to make sure it's not overflowing snails aren't going to be happy but shouldn't be living there then sorry um, ah they got the nettles on them. It's got stung a bit. But yeah, that's starting to clear up a bit already. You can see. Just let that run. Get the turbidity tube out and um, make sure that we can see the cross at the bottom. Then we will move on to the next rad. Right. So to the eye, that looks pretty good. Let's see how good it actually is. That's no, not bad. It is clearing up. It's a tad cloudy still, but we can see the X at the bottom. I think I'll probably give that another minute or so. Do you know what? It might also be my turbidity tube as well, because it's been used for so long. It's, I think the plastic itself has gone cloudy, which probably doesn't help. But I mean, if you can see the X at the bottom, the water stops moving. It's probably me holding it. Right, let's actually try it again now. And put it somewhere stable. So it's not going to move. Let the water stop moving. Yeah, look, clear, clear as day. So although the tube might be cloudy, you can see the X at the bottom there. So yeah, we can uh, move on to the next radiator now. Right, so we switch over to the next rad. Let's see how long. It takes all the dirt to start coming through on this. Come on. We can't see much dirt coming through. Right, I'm going to pause it and come back to it once it starts getting dark. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Look at that. So this is the next radiator. So again, just going to let that run clear. And then I'll see, test again with the turbidity tube. Once we can see the X, we can move on again. Right, so that's us doing the last few bits. You can hear it's starting to run dry. 
all the radiators are done. I killed the power, so the three port moved into hot water position, so we're just done the cylinder coil as well. And now, yeah, always use the bun tap because the water pressure in here was so good for the flow rate. It was spilling out there, it was overflowing, so luckily I had this in here. So yeah, now I've just got to drain the remaining water out of here um, and then have a tidy up. So yeah, it's picked up a fair bit more on the second pass whilst we were dumping, which is good because now we know that we've got as much dirt out of the system as possible. Um, we're going to clean this up, tidy this up, and then whack the heating back on. And we'll just go around with the thermal imaging camera again just to make sure everything's getting nice and hot. Right, we are back up and running. Pumps back on. And now you can see that's hot. We've got heat across all of there. Heat across there. Here across that one. Nice even heat there. That one's good. Let's just check downstairs. As she was saying, the problem was downstairs it wasn't getting hot. So there we go. It's nice and hot. Nice and hot. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. So yeah, everything's getting hot. Happy days. 10 radiator power flush, open vent system, done and dusted.